In this video, we're going to continue with the engineer tasks on the tunnel systems. In the last tunnel system video, I just gave you some considerations and some places to look on information for helping with planning on how to build your tunnels. I'm going to do a couple videos here on uh, things that you can put into your, your tunnels to make them uh, better, more livable, more survivable, that type of thing. Now, first off, the, sh the uh, shameless plug. If you like what I do, the Patreon channel, the address is up at the top. I also put a link to it in the description of the videos. Come on over there. I try to post things over there, links to videos, books, articles, whatever I come across about every two to three days. Sometimes I'll post every day if I come across a lot of info at one time. Uh, it's information, like in the videos here, stuff that's uh, important for militia to know. Uh, there's information in there a little bit on prepping, you know, stuff that translates over between the two. Most of the videos I post over there are free. Anyone can uh, click on the links or whatever, play the videos and watch them over there. There are patron only videos that are over there in order to view those. You have to pledge to become a patron and become a patron of this channel. The money I collect gets used for supplies for the militia unit IMM. Now into the uh, meat and potatoes of the video here. Emergency escape shafts. <clears throat> Whatever tunnel system you put in, you must have some way to escape in an emergency. It could be because the enemy has found your uh, primary entrance and exits. They have them blocked off. They could have been uh, blocked off because of bombardments. You've taken an airstrike and it's collapsed some of the tunnels you're trapped inside the rooms and you have to get out or you're gonna suffocate <clears throat> or you could be in a situation where the uh, carbon dioxide or monoxide levels inside the tunnels is increasing too quickly and you have to get out in order to keep from suffocating or it could be a situation where there's a, there's a fire inside the tunnels and you need to escape. So you have to have some way to get out. Now you can just have a regular open tunnel that goes out with a hatch at the end. You go through the hatch and you're out and you're safe. But those types of tunnels are more easily collapsed during bombardments. Now, over the years, when I've looked up information on bomb shelters and that type of stuff, and information on Viet Cong tunnels, tunnels used in the Pacific by the Japanese when they did defenses, tunnels and bunkers and stuff used in Korea, you know, wherever different types of excavations have been done. One of the things I came across with uh, bomb shelters, at least ones that are made nowadays, they include an emergency escape shaft. And that shaft is typically going to be filled with either round gravel, like your pea rock, or it's going to be filled with dry sand. Whatever materials inside that shaft must be dry, because any moisture that's trapped in there is going to cause problems. It's going to cause corrosion. It's going to cause degradation. The reason they fill the shafts with sand or rock is to prevent it from being collapsed if there is some type of shock wave, an earthquake, or whatever nearby. It keeps it from getting crushed. Now I have two examples here. One would be from a first level. This one would be from farther down. Let's say you know, your second level, your third level, your fourth level. We'll start with the uh, simplest one first over here. Now your escape shafts are either going to be vertical or they're going to be angled. The easiest for you to get out will be 
the angled ones and that would be the easiest also for taking out casualties if you have people that are injured you can strap them to litters or and then pull them out with a rope or you can wrap a uh, rope around their chest underneath their armpits and that stuff and then pull them up and out the angled will be a lot easier for getting that casualty out now you're also going to have to have some type of ladder system on the sides on the angled one here you're going to want that ladder system on the bottom now for the possibility of casualties you're going to want that uh, ladder system to be fairly uh, flat you don't want it protrusions like uh, iron rungs hanging out that you grab a hold of and move yourself up you'd want a uh, almost a ladder that's bolted to the side something along those lines that would act almost like a little uh, ramp to help pull your casualties out out of there a good example for something for thinking on is like your aluminum extension ladders take a section of that and bolt it to the side that would be a way of thinking or you could do a wooden ladder same thing bolted to the bottom so that uh, you can use that as a ramp to pull the casualties up and out now the top is not going to go all the way to the surface you're going to want say a foot foot and a half of dirt between the top of the ground and your final escape hatch that final escape hatch is for removing from the inside and there should be possibly uh, screwed to the side there inside a uh, vapor barrier plastic bag maybe a couple of them to uh, protect the tool you're going to have an entrenching tool or two to dig your way up and out and you'll let that dirt fall down the shaft as you're digging out it would be the same with this also so you would open up the hatch pass it down if there's people behind you let it fall down behind you whatever and then you you know start digging with your e-tool to dig your way up and out some of the dirt will probably fall in your face when you take that open up that hatch to take it down so be careful now down here you're gonna have a hatch or a door also that has latches on the inside here and that door holds the sand inside here you're gonna open up that door open up the latch let it swing let it fall whatever and the sand is gonna pour out down onto the floor now if it's gonna to cause too much of an issue have a couple shovels which you should have in a room anyway and start shoveling that sand off to the side so it doesn't cause as much of a problem with you trying to climb up and out but if you do it right that sand that uh, P rock whatever comes down it mounds itself down here you can push it towards the wall make yourself a better of a ramp which would help you with taking the casualties up and out or with helping you to get up inside that escape shaft now I have seen with uh, some videos I think it was with Atlas Shelter they demonstrated one of their escape shafts what they had there was a thicker rubber little uh, port near the bottom of the door or the, sh or the uh, hatch you're supposed to take a knife you're supposed to slit that rubber open and then the sand which is dry will then start pouring through the hole in that doorway down here to take the pressure off the door so that you'll be able to open it more easily that's something you could think of also you're only uh, limited by your own intelligence and ingenuity now the shaft itself I would think of possibly using some type of barrel some type of 55 gallon drum my personal preference especially for this final leg going to the surface 
would be to use plastic ones because those would be harder to pick up obviously by metal detection equipment. Limit the amount of metal that you have inside your shaft. So you would just cut out the bottom on uh, the barrel or on all the barrels you're going to use and then you'll just fit them onto each other. You'll take the top of the one barrel, you'll cut open the uh, top, you're going to fit that up into the bottom of the one above it. Maybe you're going to go through, add a little bit of sealant to it, some silicone or something to keep water from getting through. If you're going to use steel barrels, you're going to want to coat them. You're going to want to prevent that corrosion. You're going to pre want to uh, protect, protect it so the water is not going to get in there and cause you issues. Rust over time will degrade that uh, escape shaft and it will collapse. Now over here we have from farther down. I've been thinking about how to do this and the easiest I could think of is almost doing it like a uh, stairway with landings. So you'll have the shaft that comes up on one end of this little miniature room here and then the door going up to the next shaft, the next leg of your stairway if you think of it is on the other end and then you go up and then you just keep alternating back and forth till you would reach the surface. The final leg here would be the same as over here. You're going to have to have, because it's a vertical shaft, some type of swinging door or hatch here with a latch on the underside over here. You grab that latch, you pull it, and hopefully it's on some type of uh, bearing system to make it easier that you're going to be able to uh, pull it back, release the hatch, and then the sand's going to start pouring down. Now, because you're going to have a lot more of a limited space here, you're probably going to need some type of drop shaft right below it with a grate right over the top. So as the sand comes down, falls through the grate, down in, and it starts filling up this shaft. So that shaft should be about the same size as this one maybe a little bit less so that it uh, mounds up over the top of the grate a little bit and then same thing you have ladder on the one side you come in stand up inside here and start crawling your way up and out so maybe this will be like uh, four foot tall or something like that or five foot and uh, keep in consideration there's going to be a lot of weight a lot of force on the hinge here on this swing door so it's going to have to be something a little bit more substantial along the lines of say a uh, barn door strap hinge something that's going to be able to take a good amount of weight your normal door hinges on your house hint on your house doors is not going to be strong enough they're going to rip right out and whatever you sink them into up here you're going to have to use some pretty good bolts, uh, giant wood screw type bolts to hold it in that are going to be pretty good length. Uh, another option is, is you have some type of uh, metal framing up here and it's welded to the framing. And then potentially welded to the door if it's a metal hatch. Whatever you come up with, whatever materials you have available, whatever works the best for you. Same situation, you get in here, get up near the top, you have up here near the top rung, you have your entrenching tool hidden up there inside plastic bags, it's sealed to prevent moisture from causing problems. Pull it out of the bag, you open up the door that's up here, let it drop down behind you going down, make sure to give warning to anyone down here that you're dropping it so that they're not standing underneath there as it comes flying down. And they back away a little bit in case it bounce. They then go through, start digging their way up and out. So There's different ways you can do this. Uh, I will say whatever you use for escape tunnels 
emergency exits, emergency escape shafts, do not use them. They're there for emergencies. The more they get used, it increases the chance that the enemy is going to find them. This is going to be something that's used for emergency purposes. So you don't want the enemy to realize that it's there. That is going to allow you to get out and to survive so that you can fight another day. If you're doing this off of a homemade bomb shelter, which is always a possibility, same thing. You conceal it so that no one's going to find it and use that emergency exit, emergency hatch to get into your shelter. Now you're probably wondering how are you going to put this in? You can dig from the top, going straight down or from an angle here, putting in your tubing for your shaft. Get your door set closed on the inside. You then dump in your dry sand. Uh, I don't remember what type of sand they recommended. I know it's not a regular type of sand. I think this was a little bit finer grit sand is what they uh, were talking about with the Atlas Shelter thing. Fill that up and then have the emergency hatch that you're going to pull up closed behind you. You might have a little bit of space here, say maybe a foot, half foot, something like that. You'll have the uh, hatch in here. You'll pull it up closed. You'll uh, latch it in place somehow. I don't know if you'll have some type of lock system or whatever you'll come up with. Then maybe put a piece of plastic over the top just to protect it to keep water from coming through. That plastic would easily be breached with an entrenching tool. And then you backfill with dirt and then make sure to replace the vegetation on top to camouflage. There you got it then uh, constructed. You're only limited by your own ingenuity. Now for all my engineer brothers in the Patriot and Militia movements, always remember, essay ons.